Dirty dealings, corporate battles, consumer woes. This is Evening 5. Malaysia Aviation Group said the reduction of its network following multiple disruptions to its services that took place in recent weeks involves 20% of its capacity. This involves services across the routes of its three airlines, Malaysia Airlines, Firefly and Amal within Malaysia, as well as ASEAN, North Asia, Australia, New Zealand, Greater China, South Asia and the Middle East. MAG Group MD Datuk Captain Isham Ismail said the global shortage of aircraft parts has affected the one-time delivery of its new aircraft orders, which in turn has impacted its fleet planning. Isam explained that in 2024, MAG was scheduled to receive 17 new aircraft orders as part of its fleet modernization program, but has only to date received four Boeing 737-8 aircraft of the 13 contractually agreed by 2024. For the Airbus A330neo, MAG was scheduled to receive four aircraft, but is now expected to receive three by year-end. Isham also said the group has experienced attrition of a skilled workforce as a new maintenance, repair and overhaul players, both local and international, have entered the Malaysian market. He said that to address this, MAG are collaborating with partners to augment its workforce and have also improved the remuneration packages to sustain a strong talent pipeline for the group. Further compounding the issue was the global shortages causing delays in the production of spare parts. Isham reiterated that MAG is fully committed to ensuring safe and reliable operations and remains steadfast in focusing its efforts towards stabilising its operations amid backlash over flight cuts it has made following multiple disruptions to its services that took place in recent weeks. On Wednesday, Transport Minister Anthony Locke announced that CAAM had cut the validity of the National Carrier's Air Operator Certificate from three years to one after a probe into the technical issues it had faced recently. Locke said that this was done to ensure that the airline complies with the mitigation plan that it announced last Saturday to address these issues. Kuting Malaysia saw its net profit jump 74.5% year-on-year to 82.2 million for its second quarter, driven by its leisure and hospitality business. Quarterly revenue rose 7.9% to 2.67 billion from 2.47 billion a year earlier for the same reasons. Kuting Malaysia declared an interim dividend of 6 cent per share. Kuting Malaysia said its leisure and hospitality business in Malaysia registered a 5% year-on-year increase in revenue to 1.62 billion, predominantly due to higher volume of business from Resorts World Genting. Revenue from its businesses in the UK and Egypt also rose 20% year-on-year to 468.8 million ringgit, while the US and Bahamas increased 11% year-on-year. Looking at the first half, net profit actually surged more than sevenfold to 140 million from 19.7 million a year ago, while revenue for that period improved by 14% to 5.43 billion ringgit. On its outlook, Genting Malaysia said it is cautiously optimistic of the near-term prospects of the leisure and hospitality industry and remains positive in the longer term. In Malaysia, Gutting Malaysia remains focused on leveraging its integrated resort offerings to capitalise on the ongoing recovery in regional travel. Additionally, the group says it is enhancing its digital platforms and expanding strategic partnerships to better meet evolving customer needs. India's Eros Investments, along with its Immerso AIIP division, is set to invest 1 billion US dollars or 4.33 billion ringgit to establish an AI park and film studio in Malaysia, according to a Ministry of Digital statement. The proposed investment is anticipated to feature an AI university and data centre within the park and could generate 5,000 jobs over the next five years, the ministry noted. Digital Minister Gobind Singh Deo said that this will drive global collaborations to support startups. He adds that the AI movie studio and Film City Hub will enhance talent skills in transmedia and digital productions in Malaysia. Gobin said the ventures will also identify opportunities to incorporate Malaysian content into the company's existing and new IPs. In addition, through a memorandum of understanding between Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation or MDEC and NASCOM, local talents will be trained in several key areas in the digital sphere, namely generative 
generative AI, cybersecurity, software development and next-generation technologies. The ministry noted that investments in the nation's digital content sector alone surged 1.6 billion ringgit last year from 550 million in 2022 via the Malaysia Digital Initiative by MDEC. Hong Leong Bank, which is Malaysia's fifth-largest bank by asset, saw its fourth-quarter net profit improve nearly 20% year-on-year to 1.03 billion ringgit thanks to higher operating income and provisions right back. Quarterly revenue grew 13.3% to 1.48 billion compared with 1.3 billion recorded in the fourth quarter of FY 2023. A final dividend of 43 cent per share was also declared compared with 38 cent per share previously. As of June 30th, HR LB's gross loans and financing grew 7.3% year-on-year to $194.9 billion, contributed by its expansion in mortgage, auto loans, SME and commercial banking segments, as well as from its overseas market. For FY 2024, HLB reported a 9.9% year-on-year growth in its net profit to $4.2 billion from $3.82 billion previously, thanks to higher loan-slash-financing growth, improved asset quality metrics and healthy contributions from from its associates. As of June 30th, total income expanded 1.5% to 5.71 billion, while its net interest income for FY 2024 grew 2.6% to 4.67 billion, while non interest income came in at 1.1 billion ringgit. HLB Group MD and CEO Kevin Lum said that the bank remains committed and nimble in the execution of its 3 5 year strategic plan and is keeping its focus of offering innovative products and customer centric banking services. Solutions. Meanwhile, Hong Leong Financial Group saw its net profit rise 21% in the fourth quarter to 806.1 million, led by its banking unit. Net interest income rose 10% to 1.01 billion, while non interest income rose 33% to 457.8 million ringgit. HLFG also declared a final dividend per share of 36 cent, lifting total DPS to 54 cent for FY 2024. HLFG President Tan Kong Kun said that the the group is well positioned to capture economic growth and deliver sustainable value creation through enhancing its digital capabilities, expanding its suite of products and delivering customer-centric solutions. The High Court of Singapore has dismissed an application by BSI Bank to strike out the 394 million US dollar claim brought against the bank by 1MDB and its subsidiary Brazen Sky. 1MDB and Brazen Sky are seeking redress for large scale financial losses said to be suffered as a result of unauthorized fund transfers and money laundering schemes allegedly orchestrated through accounts in the bank, which is currently under liquidation. A spokesperson from 1MDB said that they are pleased the application has been denied and are committed to holding accountable the institutions and individuals involved in misappropriating money from the sovereign fund while ensuring the recovery and restitution of these assets back to the people of Malaysia. In the civil suit, which commenced on May 2nd, 1MDB and Brazen Sky accused BSI and several of its former officers of facilitating the unauthorized fund transfers and money laundering schemes, thus assisting in the misappropriation of 1MDB's assets. The suit in Singapore is is part of 1MDB's worldwide efforts to recover misappropriated funds. On Wednesday, Switzerland's federal criminal court convicted Patrick Mahoney and Tarek Obaid, top executives at Geneva-based oil exploration company PetroSaudi, for embezzling more than 1.8 billion US dollars or 7.81 billion ringgit. The court sentenced Obaid and Mahoney to seven and six years imprisonment, respectively. The judgment also permitted the recovery of 1.75 billion US dollars to Malaysia. Further, the court ordered that the duo's assets, totaling 240 million US dollars, be confiscated and restored to 1MDB.